Now, though, time for a look at the weather. Thomas Schaffernacker is here. We were just reporting that a, a brief respite anywhere in Australia with some rain bringing well, water to areas that desperately need it. Yeah, that's right. And, and the heat's obviously going to return again in the next uh, few days or so. But the, the drop in the temperature that we've seen in the last few days has been absolutely extraordinary. Let me show you just what's been happening in one particular place. So this is in Canberra. So they actually beat their all-time record, which was back in the late 60s. It was 42.2 degrees. They actually got up to 40. Four degrees Celsius, which from a climatological point of view, that is actually absolutely smashing the records because normally we beat records by point something of a degree. This is by, you know, multiples uh, uh, pretty much almost of, of degrees. And then when that heat wave ended, within a space of 24 hours, the temperature dropped down to 21.7 degrees. So that's absolutely staggering. And you know, obviously, it's not the only place that experienced a huge temperature drop. Some areas actually experienced even a bigger drop, which is absolutely insane. So there's one, I mean, never mind where these places are, it's across southern parts of Australia. Uh, some, some of these temperatures occurred on the 3rd of January, some, some on the 4th, but the point I'm trying to make is here that there are places where we saw around a 30 degree drop. So that is pretty, uh, pretty staggering. So yes, a temporary end to the heat wave. But symptomatic yeah. of climate change. Well, you know, and this is quite, quite often what we talk about because climate change is not just about the high temperatures but also occasional other records being broken like low temperatures. It's about the weather systems being more extreme. It's about the jet stream being perhaps a little bit more uh, unpredictable, chaotic, and that's exactly what we've been seeing uh, across uh, the south. So, so here's, here's that cooler air coming in from the south, um, from, from the southern oceans here in Australia. And just like we often show you here, the jet stream across the North Atlantic, there is obviously a jet stream on the other side of the globe as well. And it too, just like our jet stream, has these ripples and undulations. And this jet, jet stream plays a role as well. And it may well be the case that these extreme uh, patterns in the jet stream have led to some of these uh, huge swings in the temperature as well. Obviously, there's... Um, I don't know why that's not white, though. There's plenty of ice down there. It's not warmed up quite yet. But... Um, but, but that's what we're seeing, obviously, at the moment uh, in Australia, is those huge, huge temperature variations. And then by Thursday, Friday, it looks as though, unfortunately, those temperatures are going to be skyrocketing again. So it's an ongoing pattern we're seeing. That's terrible. Yeah. Now, nothing so dramatic here, but a bit, bit of a change coming. Yes, and actually, on the topic of temperatures, we are potentially going to be some, seeing some very high temperatures for us for this time of the year in Scotland tomorrow. I don't think they're going to be record-breaking, but they could be within a couple of degrees or so. So that is pretty extraordinary as well. And again, it's that pattern of those high temperatures we're seeing around the globe. So this is, what, uh, this is what's happening right now. There's a storm um, just uh, south of uh, Iceland. Uh, the weather front is moving across the UK right now. So it's bringing some rainfall and also some strong winds. I mean, the winds have been gusting uh, 50, 60 miles an hour in some places as well. Uh, these are the temperatures around the rush hour, so the skies are clearing. Now, temporarily, I have to say, tonight and into tomorrow, the winds are going to fall flat, almost flat calm in some areas, before by the end of the night they, they start picking up again because there's another storm south of Iceland and we're feeling the effects of it as well. And boy, are we going to feel the effects across northern parts of the, the country because across Scotland, Scotland and Northern Ireland, we are talking, uh, and parts of Northern England, uh, howling gales through the course of Tuesday. You can start counting the isobars if you want. There's, a, there's an awful lot of them, and that, of course, means strong winds. And those strong winds are drawing up some incredibly mild air uh, from the south. And quite often in this situation, we, uh, we get some high temperatures, particularly to the eastern side of mountains. There's a particular phenomenon called the phone effect. Uh, it sort of bumps up the temperatures by a few degrees. Too, too complicated meteorology to go into it in a forecast like this, but suffice to say, uh, wind and rain, the story uh, of the day tomorrow. In some places, winds gusting in excess of 70 miles an hour, easily 50, 60 inland. And in some spots, for example, around the Murray Firth, uh, we could see temperatures nudging up to around 16, 17 degrees. Now, we are in January and we are getting temperatures of 15, 16 degrees Celsius, potentially. That is not necessarily good news, of course, across our part of the world. Um, now, here's Wednesday's weather forecast. So one storm moves out into, the, um, into Scandinavia. Behind it, the winds ease down somewhat. I mean, it's still blowing a hooli across the northern half of the country. But the south never really gets rid of that mild air. So the thinking is that in places like London, we're still talking about 
14 again in January, way above. It should be closer to something like 6, 7, 8 degrees Celsius. But it does look as though by the time we get to the end of the week, those temperatures will, will be nudging at least back down to where they really should be uh, for our climate uh, this time of the year. That's it, you're up to date.